Siobhan, are you there? Yes. Hello, everybody. She is. Right, I'm going to shut up and let you get on with it. All right. <laughs> well, look, my God, what an amazing festival. And I'm so delighted to be part of it. And I mean, at the moment, I, I've enjoyed, you know, listening to everyone. And Debbie has really just sort of paved the way for me to talk today. But also, I just want to be conscious of the fact that we are doing something so beautiful, bringing such light and healing and awareness into the world at the moment because god there's a lot of conflict so well done everyone i'm just really really loving all of this well my name is siobhan downey for people that don't know me and i'm the founder of the natural mind coach and i help women who really want to eliminate stress and anxiety from their life through natural means it's basically a blending of wellness coaching with angelic healing and tarot I'm a certified wellness coach. So coming from that perspective, all of my work is based on science. Mindset change, behavior change. And really the thing that most people have been talking about today, but for me, it's the field of epigenetics. It's where the mind and body connect. And Debbie alluded to it earlier when she was actually saying now that scientists are actually starting to say, that it's not just our brain here, that in fact, we have a second brain, our intuitive brain, and it is in our stomach. And it does lead right into what I'm going to be speaking about, which is intuition and those gut feelings. Now, this is the hottest field of study at the moment in science. It's basically where quantum physics and biology kind of meet. And basically what we're now scientists are proving is that the cellular structure that we know within ourselves is changed and changeable. The DNA, um, it's not actually fixed. We always thought you inherited your DNA. That was all you had, you know, whatever traits you inherited, you were stuck with them. But we now know that in fact, that's not true our thought does play a huge part in how we, how we are physically. This is actually where science and spirit meet. It's where they're coming together into this wonderful new field. Now, as spiritual workers and intuitives, we know all that already. We get that. But, um, just don't tell the scientists yet because some of them are quite sensitive and occasionally grumpy about that. As an angel therapist, as a psychic reader, as a psychic and a tarot reader, all of my work then is based on divine intervention and assistance from our ancestors and our guides and our angels. And then finally, as a heart-based entrepreneur, all of my work is based on helping and serving others reconnect and finding their own natural sense of wholeness. My work for me is both very personal as well as professional and all of my learning and everything that I do, even though I align it with my professional learning, it's all really, really based on personal work and personal needs and my own personal journey. I think probably again, all of us as intuitive workers our personal journey has been massive in what we do and why we do it. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about the psychic diet and actually why we can't lose weight, even when we want to lose weight. But even though I'm speaking to you in terms of actually losing weight, this is applicable to most things in life. Like all of the talk, everybody talking beforehand has kind of alluded to again. It's that mind-body connection. It's that intuitiveness. I mean, Debbie set up, the, she really synchronously led the talk for me beforehand, as did Annalisa earlier, talking about how you access um, your spirit of abundance. It's really all interconnected in that way. But why did I work on the psychic diet? To be honest, it's a very real experience of myself and a very real experience that I had with clients of mine. I've always been very naturally quite slim, but about three years ago, 
I just started putting weight on. And no matter what I did, I couldn't understand. I couldn't just get rid of the weight. And I want to, you know, we all know about losing weight. You know, we eat less, we move more. That's the logical thing. That's what we're told. That's right. Actually, it's wrong. Losing weight in the weight loss industry is a multi-billion pound industry. Yeah, it keeps us losing. Traditional diets keep us losing, but we don't lose weight. The weight actually keeps on creeping on bit by bit by bit. All we lose and reduce is our bank balance because we sign up for yet another diet, we buy another book, we get another quick fix. We lose our self-esteem. We lose, lose our sense of confidence in ourselves, and we lose our sense of being able to make healthy choices. We become stuck in a cycle of despair, confusion, and most of all, we come, become disconnected from our bodies and our natural sense of actually what is good for us. I mean, again, I'll allude back to what Debbie said. She said, you know, we didn't logically work things out when we actually were, you know, as human beings. We initially had to trust our gut instinct going way back, or otherwise we'd have been eaten. We wouldn't have gotten here. But we have lost that disconnect, especially when it comes to knowing what's right for us. We're overloaded. We're bamboozled. We don't know what to eat. Do we, is fat okay? Do we give up dairy? Do we, do we you know, give up wheat? Do we go vegan? Do we drink meal replacements? Do we stop eating altogether? Is sugar good? Is sugar bad? Is sugar, you know, is honey okay for us? We get a server and we're told red wine is good for us. Yay, red wine, woohoo! Two days later, we're given another survey telling us actually red wine's really, really bad for us. We're back to square one. And at some point we just kind of go, oh my God, what do I do? Where do I turn? I know myself. And especially as I said about three years ago, I suppose I got very out of balance personally in my own life. And it just really, really manifested physically for me. Well, what is the answer to this weighty problem? that we have then i really began to question what is extra weight where does it come from why do i have it and most importantly what can i do about it because that's really what we all want to find that balance and you know the answer it does lie between our ears but it's not our mouth it's not what we're eating and actually, it does lie in our heart. It is our mind and our emotions. And what weight is, it is literally because we are out of balance with our intuitive self. It's a proverbial security blanket. We are not feeling secure. We're not feeling grounded. We're not feeling whole. So we actually put on weight to wrap ourselves up and protect ourselves. So in that sense, it's quite logical. Our bodies are always logical. Mother Nature is always clever in what she does. And then in case I had to look at it, well, okay, we're feeling out of balance. Well, why? Why are we so out of balance? Again, Debbie and everyone else alluded to it beforehand. We are in a state where we're told to believe the busier we are, the better we are. We are in a connected world, we are on show, we're, you know, turning up for meetings. Even in this time of like lockdown, where there's a bit of like grounding and all of that, and a lot of us are appreciating it, people are still frantically meeting and meeting deadlines and all the rest of it. But the truth of the matter is, we're divinely created beings. Remember earlier when I spoke about DNA and the changing of the cellular stru structure that now they're actually be beginning to understand. Um, 
and that is changeable. What well, if we look at the science of chemistry? And my own husband is a biochemist, so this is always quite interesting when you have somebody so intuitive and spiritual in the house and you were a scientist at the same time. Uh, so as you can understand, our, our, our conversations can be quite uh, funny. Um, basically, the science of chemistry, and if we even look at the whole periodic table, it confirms 100% absolutely that we are made of the same stuff of the stars, carbons, atoms, you name it. We're made of the same stuff of the heavens, of the universe. In truth, we're stardust, which I, I just adore. You know, we're teeny tiny atoms of stardust and we've come together in matter. But our true nature is lightness, it's freedom, it's joy, it's vitality, it's peace, all good stuff. But here's the thing. We incarnated into this physical world. We chose to. That's the whole dichotomy of being human. Unlike the angels, we have choice. We've chosen to incarnate into this physical world to experience physicality and, you know, as a vehicle also to move our souls on and experience karma and all sorts of stuff like that. But in incarnating into this physical world, this world of matter, and we perceive it as hard, and we also believe in separation. That is the concept. In fact, that's the original fall from Eden. It's that separation from that divine link. And this is especially so in Western society. You'll see in Eastern societies and Eastern philosophy, they are much more in tune with balance. They literally say yin and yang. We are completely out of that. We are, how, how, how Western society developed is completely different than that. We have that essential duality. And I mean, even if you look at Descartes, I think, therefore I am. You know, so it's, it's completely devoid of I feel. Everything is in our brain and it's thinking, which is important when you actually have to do your mindset changes in that, but it's not the whole story. We experience our world entirely from our conscious thought. And as we know, our conscious mind is 10%. 90% is on conscious thought. It's our core beliefs, it's our core behaviors, it's all of those things that we, we're not consciously aware of. So our natural experience of flowing, moving, creativity and evolving is lost. And our inner knowing is cut off. Our inner high priestess has been sliced off at the neck, in a sense. And we feel stunted. We feel stuck in this literal, physical, body of matter. Wrongly, we believe that this is all there is, but now we're starting to learn more. We think it's immobile, we think it's fixed, and our very thoughts, ironically, of the struggle of trying to lose the weight, being aware that we are overweight, is in fact sending more energy into keeping us fat. This is where our stress and anxiety comes from. And it's actually a stress and anxiety in lots of aspects in our life. It doesn't have to be just focused on weight, but I am speaking about that today. It's our separation from source energy, essentially. Mentally, we have forgotten our origins, but emotionally, we haven't. And there is a deep, longing within us. It's this desire to feel whole again. It's this ache inside in us. It's literally a gap in our soul. And if you think about that, that's what it is. It is a gap in our soul. And we wrongly and continuously try to soothe that with food. We distract ourselves from this continual discomfort. 
two minutes left, sorry. And this isn't actually a hunger. This is, it's not a real hunger, it's a spiritual hunger. So I, you know, I've got two minutes now and I can't fully talk about what I wanted to talk about in the 20 minutes. But it does mean that we actually have to reconnect with our body, reconnect with, you know, change our mindset, re-engage with our sensual side. And when we do that, we'll actually be able to intuitively begin to know what is right and wrong for us. I have a couple of little steps that we can do very quickly and easy for you to begin to re-engage with that knowing mind-body connection. First of all, stop all negative talk. Our words have power as do our thoughts. If you want a different reality, choose words of love. Choose actions of self-support. Have a mindset audit. Send words of love and healing to your body. See yourself as you want to be, not as you are now. Sending love to yourselves will actually get them to vibrate with a higher frequency. They will respond to you. Spend time in nature. It's the quickest and easiest way of reconnecting with that divine part of yourself. Choose movement that is joyful for you because we're, we, we are flowing. So dance garden, swim, cycle, have sex, do what's good, what makes you feel good. Eat food that is nourishing and nurturing to your body. We instinctively know what's right for us. Don't rush, take your time, you know, make a ritual of eating. Use lovely cutlery, lovely crockery, set the table, light a candle, even if you're on your own, make it a joy, make it a pleasure. Don't punish yourself if you stop up, step away from healthy eating. Simply begin again. And finally, most importantly, and this is about manifesting real actual change. Bless your food with love, knowing it will nourish you. Bless your body with vitality. Bless your life with your authentic power, unleashing your natural passion, honoring your purpose and your wonderful contribution to this word, world and be gentle and kind and loving with yourself. Thank you so much, Siobhan. That was brilliant. That was really, really brilliant. And um, I can say that I did have a reading with Siobhan, um, which was kind of like a combination of tarot and all the kind of life coaching. And it was absolutely outstanding. The two work so, so well together. So yeah, it was yeah, it was it really was something special. So thank you. If anybody